Hello, good evening. Welcome to this screening of uh, Fashion and Cinema. And uh, without much ado, please welcome with me Madeline and Kimvara. Good evening, everyone. We're going to have. I've got so much to ask Madeline in quite a short amount of time, so we have to be. Bear with me if I'm quite quick. So I wanted to say thank you all so much for being here. It's an honor for me to be doing something with fashion and cinema. I'm such a huge fan of everything they do. And I'm such a huge fan of Madeline. And aside from her work in Jackie, which is spectacular, and you'll get to see everything in a minute, she's worked on some incredible films and also my favorite TV show, Versailles, which is absolutely fantastic. And if you've seen it, you'll know that the costumes are some of the best that have ever appeared on TV. And she's just told me they're filming, they've done season two, and they're filming season three, so that's great news. <laughs> so I want to talk to you about Jackie, and I also want to talk to you about how you actually started in the industry to get to this point. But I think first, we should really talk about the film, how it came about, how it came into your life, and how you set about getting your mind into the actual, into the era that she belonged in, because it's such an iconic time. And I wonder whether you were very familiar with that time personally or whether you had to do a lot of research. Well, the research was not so difficult because it's such an, a big amount of uh, documents and uh, the set design started before us and they had already an enormous dossier about the events. But uh, for me it was, well, yeah, I remember what happens, but it's not part of my story directly and that was the challenge, not to betray anything because it's so very much in the memory of uh, American people in their history. So it was a bit, you know, sensitive to be um, on this path and, uh, you know, and just, and help the, the actress, which is incredible, but help her to go into this uh, character is as easily as possible. And when you're re researching something like Jackie, which we know what she wore and one has to really replicate that. Do you decide that you're gonna to go to the fashion houses that were famously connected with her and source things that they would have made or are you always in the way that you work, would you make everything yourself? We had to do everything ourselves because for the pink costumes we had to make like uh, five, different, five uh, samples, really? of course, because it's, uh, you know, of course, we shoot first when it's bloody, and then the accident uh, arrives. And um, we had to make some tests at the camera to make sure that it was the right pink to have the good result after the choice of the camera and the treatment of the image. So we did it all ourselves in the workshop. And anyway, this costume is someone closed under keys for years. And um, I think I, I did like I ever do coming, I mean, starting from pictures or, or, or paintings or, you know, and then we do it. It's an interpretation. So with, for, for this one, we did the same. And for the red one of Dior, when she's um, traveling into the, uh, the White House and presenting the White House and the work she made in it, uh, it was a, a dress for, from Dior, but f even for this one, we had to, to choose to do it ourselves. And where do you source the fabric and the, the buttons, the, some of the finishes? Because I did read that you'd gone with the pink suit, which if no one is aware with this pink suit, which uh, she was wearing when, during the assassination. So she's looking very, very chic and then this, this suit becomes covered in blood. It's an iconic pink suit that was made by Chanel or we don't know that it was made by Chanel, but it's famously aligned with Chanel. What, what's the story I behind that? I think it's jacket? really made by Chanel because I've, we, we, you know, we've been on the way to find the, the lady we, who made the fabric. She was a, a weaver, you say that? A weaver, yeah. A weaver. And that's what the, her first contract with Chanel, so I know for sure it was a Chanel one. And she was ready, not her, but the house was ready to make it again for us, the, the fabric. But we couldn't do that because we had to, to make sure of the color before and we had to choose the thread and it was too far away and too short in the time not to do it by ourselves, like a dyeing uh, fabric we found and, and, and go on. 
And, w and with the buttons, does Chanel... I didn't know this, but for anybody, Chanel has some kind of button library that anybody can actually go to and try and replace what they've lost. Is that right? I never had a costume <laughs> from Chanel. But I know that Elsa Heitzman, which is in charge of the press at Chanel, called me and said, why, why didn't you ask us to make the costume? I answered what I just told you. And she said, but we could give you the galon and the buttons and some little details which are really Chanel. I said, OK. And then we had to prove that our technical uh, way of doing it and the colors and everything was right. And then they approved it and gave us uh, the buttons, the little chain which is inside to make the, the right weight of the jacket, just in case it falls down and you can see it. And the label of, the, of this period too. But, uh, you know, we had to do it by ourselves. It was too short and too um, difficult, too tricky. The red one we had to make red and we had to make pink too because the... We, we used a footage and then we had to shoot in black and white too. And in black and white, the red was too dark. I mean, it's just technical, but it's, it's just explaining why we couldn't put it too far away from our control. You see all this work that goes into all these things that we never realize. Um, how involved was Natalie Portman with you as, as an actress in the film? Um, how involved does she get in what might fit, what might suit? Is, it, is a, a neck made less boat neck because it's more suitable on her or you're just saying this is what Jackie wore and you're going to wear it? It was just Jackie, what Jackie wore, but Natalie has not at all the proportion that Jack, Jacqueline Bouvier had. So we, anyway, we had to ad adapt. And of course we have to adapt with the complicity of the actress. And um, she, she's so professional. I mean, it's, it was very nice to work with her. I'm sure, I'm sure. Now, when it comes to the undergarments, because we see her often in her petticoats, were these modern handmade petticoats or do you go to these vintage shops and find underwear of that time so that the character can feel kind of prepared underneath? It's, it's a mixture. I mean, we found some pieces we'll see when you see the movie. Then it's a moment where she is going from one outfit to another. She's just looking for a way. And then we had some vintage things that we found at collectors and a vintage shop. And um, she has also, the, the, the underwear is one new but looking like on, exactly on the type of the one which, was made, which were made on that time. And some others are vintage, but you know, it's always a bit like that. You take what you can nowadays to, to take the, the public to the, to the period. Have you found, I've, I've heard and understood that in terms of finding the real vintage items, that in fact the vintage supplies of the world have been so plundered by fashion and everybody that it's actually really hard to find these real genuine items anymore, whereas 10 years ago there was just such a surplus because vintage wasn't sort of in in, in the mainstream. Is that something you'd agree with or do you have your secret sources? No, it's true. What you say is very true, but there are still some collectors which work with the um, labels. And then I, I used to, to meet them when I worked on Saint Laurent, Greg Hussel. Huh? Mm -hmm. And then I know who has what uh, as a haute couture um, pieces. Not sure what I could find there, but, you know, try at least. And um, in the rental houses also, there are some very interesting pieces of, uh, of these periods. The rental houses, so for the film you, we were talking, you said there's, a, there's a amazing rental houses in LA and also in France. So you were going between the two in order to get, as well as always for the men's costumes as well. Is it easy when you, you book in and is, are you spending days in these warehouses sourcing what you want to put on or is it yeah, you an have, easy... You need time because you, you, you just drop piece by piece but we started in France because we shot all the parts which is inside the White House in France. The set was built uh, in a studio in France. And then we had a very short time of shooting in uh, USA, uh, in Washington, because we needed the outside of the, of the buildings. And there in the States, I had to go to Los Angeles because there are no other rental houses closer to Washington. <laughs> And then we started again to make all the crowd because we did that in Paris already for the, for the, the, the funeral part, which is inside. 
and we started again outside uh, in, in Los Angeles. It's funny to me that, um, what it, it, for me it is so American based, the actual film that you forget that one can create something anywhere. The White House itself, did you, when you were on set, did you feel that you were there in this sort of very, on set, in this very important, exciting building that's seen so much history? Did you feel, were you drawn in in some way by the interior and everything? Because it's so iconic. Yeah, and it, it was very impressive because our DP, Stefan Fontaine, used to light from the top. So you had no cables on the floor, you had nothing. And then he could be able to follow Natalie here. He was really here. And then she could go where she wanted and he, he was following. So it was, you know, the, the, the set was free of every technical things which are always on the floor and, and everywhere, the, the lights and the, the cables and so on. So the impression was stronger because of that. Yeah, you had this white carpet on the long corridor and all the paintings which were made by hand, for real. The, the, the flowers were incredible too. It was a little shop with the flowers behind the set and she changes the flower from set to set every day. Amazing, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Now, talking with, with the men's costumes, is this, because the ear is very specific to some of the fabrics and the textures you have to keep true to, but obviously, as you've said, you, you actually have to create them yourself. Was it easy to recreate the men's suits, or did you find it hard to get that authenticity? It is hard. I've been lucky because we found some, some fabric which was real, I mean, from that time. Yeah, for the costume of, uh, which one was it? JFK or Bobby, I don't remember, but we found one like that. It has not the same weight, so it doesn't fit the same, of course. And it's, it's sometimes a problem, the fabric, yeah. And where do all these costumes go when the film is over, when any film is over? I'm always very interested to know where, where everything goes, when so much work has gone into it. What, do you feel attached? No, no, I don't, I can't. I mean, if, if it's something not too recognizable, I try to, to make the production, give it to the rental houses, because we, we need to be, you know, they have to be fed some way by some new pieces. And uh, when it's too recognizable, then we keep it, because it's difficult. I mean, imagine you could see a dress that you made for someone on a new first role on something else, it's very strange. Um, I've been asked many times to give the things to the Cinematheque in Paris or in Toulouse, but it's not my property anyway. The production decides what they do with that. Yeah, I always wonder where everything goes. How did you... So you're, well, we, you're, you're nominated for a BAFTA, you're nominated for an Oscar, you have quite a few busy weeks ahead. How did you start this journey? What was the first time when you, as a young or... or uh, that you decided that you were really into costume? What influence was in your life that brought you to this point? I would say it's by chance. I mean, I was uh, in, in art school and I knew that I had, you know, this kind of uh, sensitivity which could bring me to a, a, a work attached to these uh, yeah. capacities, but I didn't know what exactly. And I, I met someone uh, on, on a on the project of film, which was looking for someone to help. Just just very few days, it was in Provence, and I used to live in Provence at that time by choice, and she didn't know the vintage shop, she didn't know how to sew, and she needed someone to help, and then, then I helped at the beginning for one week, and then I stayed a little bit more, and I realized at that time that it could be um, a universe and a work where I could be, um, useful and, and happy. So I decided to learn from that time. And then I worked with a lot of uh, designers before I, I worked on my own. Okay. And I know that you work on, on some films like Manon des Sources and Jean de Vlorette, which were very iconic, still are iconic. Did that, was that an exciting time for cinema? Because we only, in those days, we saw those costumes really just at the cinema. Now I feel we can see the costumes so much before the film. In a way, you fall in love with them, but then you also kind of watch and you go, I know that. But with, in that time, with some of those things, is the first time people were seeing them. Did you feel 
there was more impact from the cinema in for costume? Or are you actually happy now with the internet and the fact that we can see your anyone's work much more in advance of the movie coming out? I think it's a pity we see these things too much in advance. I think the surprise and the, the emotion which goes with the surprise is a bit cut by that way. But yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> what are some of the most the highlights that you've had within within the film on Jackie and some of the other things you've worked on? What what are the what's your favorite is it the end when everything's on set and you've done it, or do you like the beginning process when you don't know what you're going to do and you're starting to read books and look at references? I think any step as, it, as it's in uh, interest <coughs> and stress too. Uh, but we, it's never finished. When, when, you, when you start, you know that every day will be the day where you have to deliver something. And as still it's not in the frame, it's not done. So, I mean, the work is going on to, till the end. And you don't even know, you don't have the... You don't have the distance to know if what you're doing is, is right until it's finished. Because it's like at each moment you try to make it the best you can. And you have the idea of what is very important. But you don't know if it's going to work or not. Not really. I mean, you have to trust yourself and the people you're going, you work with. Because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's the alchemy of many things. I mean, it depends on many things that you can't control. It is team. I'm just going to end and say, what would be your advice to anyone in the audience who's starting out or wanting a career in costume design? What would be your advice to them? How would you get started? You start working for another costume designer, create your own clothes, um, walk around the museums. What, what, what can get somebody sort of a leg up on, on this quite very competitive industry? Yeah, it's very competitive, but I think it's not only one way and it's no recipe for that. I think you have to be curious. I think, it, of course, you have to go to a museum and see many kind of, you know, of, of art and expression and creation. You have to work with some others which, has the, which have the experience. But you also have to, to be open to any kind of uh, information you, you can take, you know, even have a... a a sharp eye on what the costume or just the clothes on some people uh, could tell you about them or their character. I mean, it's, uh, we're not working only for the, we're not working for the look in the cinema. We're working to create a character, and it's according to the, of course, to the the vision of the of the director, but also the feeling of the actor, which kind of go to himself from himself to the, to the character. It's a skin, it's something very important. And I think people, the clothes are very much talking about the personality of people inside, more or less, but they give indications. So interesting, <laughs> it's so interesting. Okay, we're gonna have to leave it there. Um, enjoy the film, it's absolutely beautiful. Natalie Matt Portman does an incredible performance, but the clothes really do share for me, they are a very, very big part of the film. And I want to thank Madeline. You've been such a, a great... It's just been so nice to work with you and meet with you. Um, and I want to wish you luck in the next few weeks and days with the BAFTAs and the Oscars and everything. I don't know if you have all your own wardrobe planned, but I'm sure that must be quite a pressure. Won't be a pink suit. Okay, no pink suit. No pink suit. Well, we'll look and we'll be keeping our fingers crossed for you. Thank you so much, and thank you to Fashion and Cinema. Thank, thank you. you.